You may want to have a cup of this, definitely instead of soda, possibly instead of coffee if you're trying to get a bunch of different benefits. Now, I don't have a problem with coffee. Maybe you have this alongside coffee, whatever. Point is, is that we're going to talk about the crazy effects of ginger on multiple different categories and how you can utilize it and when you can utilize it. So I'm not just going to give you the details. I'm going to give you the when, the why, and the how. First one that's probably most exciting for people is going to be the world of fatty acid oxidation or fat loss. Where does ginger come into play here? Ginger tea, things like that. Well, the research is quite astounding. There was a study that was published in Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition, the meta-analysis taking a look at 14 different studies. So large-scale data, not some esoteric little thing. They found that by having ginger supplementation, whether it's in capsule or powder or in tea, it increased the amount of weight lost, it decreased waist to hip ratio, and it improved insulin resistance. Okay, so that's opening up with just a big paper, lots of data. So clearly something is going on here, but I'm the kind of guy that likes to ask why. Why is this happening? Most of the data seems to point to a unique thermic effect. So there was an interesting study that had subjects eat breakfast and then six hours later gave them two grams of ginger powder in hot water, okay? And what they found is that this ended up increasing the thermic effect of the food that they ate by 42 calories. What does that mean? It means they burned 42 more calories because they got a heavier, higher thermic heat effect from the food that they ate. Now, 42 calories doesn't sound like that much, but considering it's free, and if you did that every day for a little over two months, you'd lose an entire pound just by adding this ginger in. Now, what's interesting is it also reduced hunger significantly. And when it comes down to weight loss, that was probably a bigger piece is the satiety aspect. So this could be something that's tremendous with fasting, right? Maybe it's increasing the thermic effect of food when we do eat, but then while we are fasting, it's keeping us satiated. So we're not feeling hungry all the time. Or if you're someone that's just looking for something tasty to sip on, it might work really well. So I would say this would be something you'd wanna do in the morning so that you can have a carryover effect and get the thermic effect from your food throughout the course of the day. So if fat loss is more of your goal with it, having it in the morning might be best. Now, where ginger really gets its name is from the digestion components. Okay, people talk about it as a stomach aid, digestion aid all the time. And if you look at the research, most indigestion comes from people having slow gastric emptying. So delayed gastric emptying, where they eat something and it's just taking a long time to kind of break down. Well, the evidence starts pointing to ginger as being very good at speeding up motility and speeding up overall just digestion. So the World Journal of Gastroenterology published a paper that had subjects fast for eight hours, and then it gave them 1.2 grams of ginger, and then an hour later had them consume a meal, had them consume soup actually. They found that the gastric emptying speed of the group that had the ginger was 12.3 minutes, compared to placebo at 16.1. Okay, we're talking almost a four minute increase in gastric emptying speed. And then the European Journal of Gastroenterology published a very similar paper that found very similar things. Also found increases in what are called antral contractions. So the gut was actually contracting faster and more frequently. So this helps the digestion, helps you potentially have less indigestion. This comes into play a lot, again, with fasting. People break their fast, and I say this because a lot of people that watch my channel practice intermittent fasting. So this could be something that helps that digestion after you break your fast. If you end up getting a stomach ache, or maybe you're doing one meal a day, or you're eating in smaller eating windows where you're compressing more food, it might help that speed up a little bit so that you can maybe get more food and get potentially more nutrition in. I put a link down below this video for the Peak Fasting Tea Bundle. That's a 12% off discount link where it has matcha, it has ginger, it has their bergamot, and it has their cinnamon herbal. Okay, so the four different teas that could be really, really beneficial for fasting. The green tea that you can use during your fasting for a little bit more energy perhaps, cinnamon to have shortly before you break your fast, ginger to have after you break your fast, and bergamot, which you could have uh, during your fast as well. So a nice blend there. So these are all cold extracted, so you're maintaining the integrity. They're all USDA organic. Okay, it was formulated by Dr. Jason Fung, who's sort of the big 
fasting expert that you probably have heard of. Okay, it's also triple toxin screened. So we're not dealing with heavy metals, we're not dealing with toxins. And we're also talking about a very antioxidant rich compound simply because of that cold extraction method. So that link is down below. They are a sponsor on this channel, but they are an awesome sponsor and there's something that is very relevant. So if you wanna try a form of ginger tea that tastes delicious along with some other ones, check out that link down below, get 12% off, Plus, you get an exclusive free gift when you use my special link down below this video. So again, top line of the description there. I saved the good stuff for now, because now we have to talk about insulin resistance and glycemic control, which is very, very interesting, especially when it comes down to how ginger can impact that. Remember that first study I talked about when I was talking about fat loss? Okay, well, that referenced something about insulin resistance. Well, what could be happening here? Well, if we look at a study in the Iranian Journal of Pharmaceutical Research, they took a look at 41 type two diabetic patients and they gave them ginger or placebo. And they found that not only did ginger reduce fasting glucose levels, but it also reduced HbA1c. This is a great thing because it tells us, okay, it wasn't just a quick shot in the arm difference. It was something that had a bigger impact longer term. Then there was another study that took a look at giving them three one gram servings throughout the course of the day of ginger. And it found that not only did it improve glycemic control, but it also improved indices of insulin resistance. So not only are we talking about potentially modulating glucose here, we're talking about potentially mediating some insulin resistant effects here as well. Now this isn't a gigantic study, but it tells us that we need to be doing more research here because it might have something to do with the gingerols and the shogols that are in ginger. So why is this happening? What's potentially happening? The proposed mechanism is something that has to do with what are called alpha amylase and alpha glucosidase inhibitors. In essence, they are carbohydrate blockers. They may be preventing the breakdown of starches into smaller sugars thereby making it so they're harder to digest, so the carbohydrates aren't absorbing as fast and as rapidly, so you're not getting these big spikes, which could have an impact on insulin, glucose, HbA1c, you name it. So it looks like from a fat loss and insulin dynamics perspective, ginger's pretty darn potent. So if you're looking at consuming it for this purpose, you might wanna consume this before having carbohydrates. If you had it after, it would be too late. Carbohydrates can absorb fast, right? So if you're having starches, you'd wanna sip on your ginger tea prior to having those starches. Okay, so, hey, I'm gonna sit down and have a bowl of pasta, drink a nice cup of ginger tea that's really strong and potent before sitting down because the evidence there is pretty strong. It could very well prevent those carbs from absorbing. Now something that's very, very big right now, and that's the world of mental health, anxiety, depression, all this, we need to touch on this. How can ginger play a role here? Well, we start with a study that was published in Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine. I wanna start with a human model study because I wanna lead with the strongest data. What they found with this is they gave subjects 400 milligrams, 800 milligrams, or a placebo when it came down to ginger. They found there were improvements in brainwave activity and working memory. Okay, so basically they were getting more brain activity and their memory was improving. Again, it's relatively small data, so we can't 100% take it to the bank. But then we look at rodent model data and it kind of helps back stuff up. So there's a study done in rodents where they found that ginger increased what's called nerve growth factor. And it improved markers that are associated with what's called neuroplasticity. So essentially the ability for the brain to carve new neural pathways and form new neurons. And this was directly associated with the fact that it also improved memory of novel objects with these rodents. Basically what that means is the mice got better at recognizing objects and they saw markers of improvement in their brain too. Very, very intriguing stuff. So again, six shogol and these gingerols, just we need to do a lot more research on it because it's really promising stuff. And then if we look at the world of inflammation, I am very cagey when I talk about inflammation because I don't wanna just say anything is gonna modulate inflammation. But there was a study that took a look at 25 studies. It was a meta-analysis, 25 studies. They found that typically ginger reduces C-reactive protein, can modulate interleukin-6, and it can reduce what's called tumor necrosis factor alpha, and it can increase what's called total antioxidant capacity. So in essence, this meta-analysis demonstrated that ginger seems to modulate inflammation and increase antioxidant ability within the body, which might actually be the overarching umbrella as to why it has all these impacts. So when should you drink it for mental benefits and when should you drink for inflammatory benefits? For inflammatory benefits, I would say drinking it at night. After you have most of the food in your system, you're probably at the peak of when you'd be inflamed outside of your workouts, that's a good time to do it then. As far as mental pieces are concerned, use it before 
tasks that are gonna be of heavy mental demand. It's been a while since I used ginger tea for that specific need, but after doing this research, I wanna do that again. I sip on green tea all the time. I used to actually mix green tea and ginger tea at the same time, and I think I need to go back to doing that now that I look at this research. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.